Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. Today we have an update regarding SpaceX's Starlink program, the successful launch that they had this morning. We also have a little update regarding the SN9's possible static fire and launch attempts, and I have a little more news regarding a Chinese space company that could be competing in the space sector soon. So be sure to stick to the whole episode if you want to know all about that. But let's get into the first story. So SpaceX has completed the eighth launch and landing of this single booster for their recent Starlink launch. Now, two big things to know about this. One, the Starlink program, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, getting these Starlink satellites into orbit is a big deal because the more they have, the more customers they can serve, the more money they can make for the company to then put into bigger missions like the Starship missions, like getting people to Mars, the stuff people actually want to see, all the cool stuff. So as boring as the whole Starlink idea is, it's really mundane, but the bigger picture is this is going to fund the actual interesting stuff people want to see and people get interested about. So good to see the Starlink program going well, going ahead as it's scheduled. The other big thing about this launch is it's the eighth launch and landing of this booster. That's a record for reusability in terms of their rocket boosters. It landed successfully on the drone ship out in the ocean, eight launches and landings. Now, if you don't remember, just a few years ago is when they finally successfully landed one of these for the very first time. And after a little bit, they then reused them. And a lot of people were skeptical as to how many times you can reuse these, right? Because you use it once, good. You use it twice, really cool. But people didn't really think you'd be using it much beyond three, maybe four times, eight times for this one. Incredible stuff. Hopefully we get to see a 10th time for this one as well. Either way, it's a record for SpaceX and it's a big leap in terms of the business side of SpaceX creating affordable space flight for customers, for other people that want to go into space and progress and continue on with the space endeavors that we need to keep going with. The next thing I have for you guys is obviously the SN9. Now from another local again, Another alert regarding today, Wednesday, same road closures as yesterday and Monday. We might see a static fire today. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it just keeps getting postponed, postponed, postponed. It's in place. It's got the engine swapped because, remember, the Raptor engines needed to be swapped out of the SN9. There was damage, so they are swapped. That's successful. We should be seeing a static fire very soon. If we go on the FAA's website again, we have another pushback. So yesterday... January 19th, the clearance for the Texas area was January 19th to January 23rd. It's now January 20th today until Sunday, January 24th. So now we have until Sunday to possibly see a launch. I don't know, but I'm hoping that we can see a static fire before the weekend. I'll be happy if we see a static fire before the weekend. That means that things are going well, systems are working properly. That's my hope. I'm just hopeful that there aren't things that we don't know about that are majorly wrong, that are postponing this even more. That's my personal worry. It's not so much of a having patience to see this. When they get it right, they'll get it right. I'm just hopeful that there's nothing big problematic that is causing the delay. That's my main concern. But either way, I'm sure if there is going to be a static fire, there will be a video of it. We will see stuff going on around so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to update on that because I will be posting updates regarding anything on the SN9 static fire as well as its launch. And the last thing I want to talk about. This is coming from spacenews.com and China's iSpace, it's a funny name, iSpace has IPO plans on their market and they are in the idea and business of reusable launcher landings like we saw today with SpaceX. Now, the thing about this though is... China's companies are far behind in terms of SpaceX and Blue Origin. They've yet to really break into this space of actually successfully launching and landing. I mean, the first time a private company put anything into orbit was July of 2019. So if you're worried about China competing with us, the good news is we are still very far ahead of China. If you're from the U.S., that is. If you're not from the U.S., that uh, probably doesn't regard you. But either way... It is cool to see China, or more or less private companies of China, getting into this space. The more companies we have, the more competition there is. I feel like that only makes things better because you now have a price in terms of competition in terms of price, so it could drive things lower. 
when you have competition, there's more of a drive to get things done to be the best. I'm curious, are we going to have like a United States city on Mars, a SpaceX city on Mars or the moon, and then like a Chinese city on the moon as well? Like how would that work? Would they coexist? I don't know how that would be. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Two different cities next to each other, one Chinese, one SpaceX or a Blue Origin city, whatever it'll be in the future. I'm excited to see that. I think with all this going on, we're almost entering like sort of like the tech bubble of the 2000s. We have all these new companies trying to get into the rocket launch game. China now, they have, I think it said about 20 companies, private companies getting into this rocket business. We have SpaceX Blue Origin, there's Rocket Lab. There's all sorts of different companies getting into the space, trying to be the first to make space travel affordable. And I don't think there's going to be just one winner. I think there'll be multiple companies competing with each other as long as they have a good, safe product and affordable price, affordable, you know, in space terms, affordable. I think it is a good thing. And I think it's really cool to see all the innovation coming to this. And it proves a point as well, because China is now using private companies for this. It proves the point that private companies are good at space. Space was never attainable before. It was slightly, but because it was in the hands of government contracting, which has proven to fail time and time again. In a private business where they have to succeed financially, there's a bottom line, they will find ways to make things work properly, to have a good product, to have an affordable product, and to find ways to make things better. When you're in the hands of the government and they can just keep throwing money at problems, you don't really have that. You kind of just have a hole for money to be thrown into. And it's crazy to see that now private companies are going to be the dominant force in this, which you would think you would think the government wouldn't allow that, but nope, that's not the case. So either way, that's all I had for you guys on this episode. Be sure to drop a like if you like this content and let me know in the comments what you think. And if you want more of this content, be sure to subscribe because I have more stuff like this come out every day. And I will be sure to update you guys as much as I can regarding this SN9. I know everybody's been super anxious about this, has been talking about this. We've been waiting for almost two weeks now is when it was really going to launch. Bear with me, guys. We'll get through it. We'll find it. SpaceX, I know they're working hard. They're going to have a good product. They're going to have the successful launch and land of the SN9. So be patient, guys. We'll get there. Either way, make sure to have a good one.